What's good YouTube? Today, I'm gonna tell you the basics and things to consider when selling commissioned artwork. I feel like there's some videos on this website that, you know, talk about specifics like how to sell on sites, or maybe the overall process of like kind of what commissioned artwork is and maybe some process videos. But I think when I started, it would have been helpful to see sort of a comprehensive guide of things to think about and things to sort of do when you are preparing or when you'd like to, you know, start selling commissioned artwork. I'll give you some key things to think about and to consider when you are deciding what type of artwork you're gonna make and sell. And I'll tell you a little bit of what I did, but I'll keep it open enough for you to, you know, choose your own path. From coming up with your style and deciding your methods of selling, I'll tell you everything that I know and everything that I've been doing for the past couple weeks. This video is aimed more towards beginners and people who would like to, you know, monetize their art for the first time. So if you're a little bit intermediate or, you know, an expert, uh, feel free to comment down below if I got anything wrong or if I missed anything. So without further ado, let's jump into the first one. You may be a student in high school or in college and you know that you want to make art, but you may not know exactly what you want to make as you've had so much art in different mediums. This can be super daunting. I remember trying charcoal drawings, printmaking, digital art, and the list goes on. It wasn't until I was in a painting class where I had a revelation and I really enjoyed that medium. I found myself being able to paint for hours, enjoy it, and be decently good at it. So the first step is to decide that style and that skill that you want to sell. The thing with commissions is that you're relying on others to provide you with information to paint or draw or sculpt. You wanna choose a style that's universal and that people would really want in their homes. For example, I chose pet portraits. A lot of people have pets and some people want to just have paintings of them in their homes. Other times people want paintings as gifts, such as a housewarming gift or, you know, for Christmas. And at other times it can act as a memorial piece such as the one that I'm currently working on in this video. I would urge you to look online to see your competition and see how you can be unique in that style. Maybe you frame it in a certain way or maybe you have a distinct, desirable compositional technique. So in short, make your stuff unique. I make my paintings in this traditional sort of old style, so that's sort of the niche that I've carved out. Point number two is that you should be realistic. Be able to create the work that you are promising to these people. There are two parts to this, ability, and what you can manage or handle. You should advertise and promise products that you can deliver. I recommend creating a small portfolio of work to share before you sell any to be able to show people what you can create. I painted a couple of pet portraits before even setting it up on my website and was better able to give clients an idea of my ability and style. The second part considers you and your ability to make the work. When I was making the portfolio pieces, I got a good idea of how long each piece takes and now I know how many I could offer to create within a given time span. Think about if you would be able to spend time making these or if you'll just be burnt out after doing a couple. Also, consider thinking about how much time you're going to spend in general. It's not fun having a job or being in school and committing to projects that would overwhelm you. So my final advice for this portion is to be realistic. Next up is supplies. Are your pieces going to be made to order or will you buy materials beforehand and sort of sell it along the way? I'd recommend buying within your budget and maybe starting out with being made to order. I currently have some canvas stretcher bars for my paintings, but a lot of the sizes offered on my website are not in my studio, thus making me have to go to an art store if one does get ordered. If you know you will make the work using the materials eventually, it's not a bad idea to also buy it in bulk so you can score some sweet deals in art stores. Finally, the big question we have to talk about is marketing. How do we actually get orders? The first step is research. As I mentioned in my first point, you have to understand the market and demand that people have for these artworks. Maybe you're making religious artworks and you notice that your audience is a lot more older people and find that print flyers at churches is your best bet. Other times you might want to reach sort of a wider audience and find that people look for custom mugs on sites like Etsy. Do the research, see your competition, and get creative. Don't be afraid to steal some things from, from different people. I recommend making flyers to send digitally and to potentially print out. Look at this one that I made for my current commissions. Use the fundamentals of digital design and don't be tacky with your design. Have good distinguishable coloring, important keywords, images of what the work looks like, and the flyer in different formats to post on different sites. I've used social media and video reels. Uh, as a way to get out there. Physical flyers I've put up in different pet stores and vet offices, um, although that can be a little bit difficult. And I've also have my own website. The number one source of work that I have found, however, has been word of mouth. Use your connections around you, reach out to people and make people around you aware of what you're doing. There's something about that real life connection that makes people more inclined to wanna to have your work and support you as an artist. It's also a good way to build that portfolio with people around you as opposed to just relying on random clients that you don't know. My final tip for this one is to be your own biggest fan. 
Be proud of the work that you're making and hype it up everywhere. So the last part of this is actually selling it. How do we make a site to be able to either accept credit cards or, or other forms of payment? There's the Etsy site route where you're able to create a page within another sort of website and they have sort of a database that people search up. So from there, it's super simple. You could sign up, put your images in, put what the description is. It's a good way to, to have people check out your, your stuff on a recognizable website and be able to pay through that. Another thing you could do is create your own website. This one's a little bit more advanced, but uh, I started my website on Squarespace because I thought that I really wanted to just have my own stuff instead of being on other people's websites. So through my website, I'm able to accept major credit cards, uh, also other payments like Zelle, Venmo, all that. And yeah, the final one, and I also recommend doing art fairs, showing your work physically in person with people. Um, you could either apply for art fairs or maybe if you're a student, they might have some sort of fair at your school that you could just set up a table, put up your work. Um, this is really good as you're meeting these people in person and you're able to advertise and talk about your work uh, a lot more in person. So yeah, there you go. Those are some points that I've taken into account in my commission and professional career uh, thus far. If you made it this far, consider checking out my other work and sharing it with your friends and family. And if you make work yourself, comment down below and I'll do the same for you. Consider subscribing and liking this video as well to help spread my content and also to learn more tips and tricks about making your artwork. Thanks again and I'll catch you in the next one.